head. Mike? Got it. Hey, Josh, thanks. Nice work. Keep us posted on this one. We're going we're to follow this. Uh, and let's bring in our one-man justice squad, Jeff Gold. Jeff, how do you see this one? Uh, again, you know, she'll, she's told the different stories. And, and, you know, if the prosecutors can prove she lured this guy, Shannon Griffin, in, is she guilty no matter if she pulled the trigger or not? Right. It's a, it's a good case for the viewers to understand the different ways to get convicted of murder. Of course, we all know that if you pull the trigger, you know you intentionally kill somebody, that that's murder. Uh, another way is to be an accomplice, uh, which is to assist in that. Uh, and that may be something that the state can prove that she assisted, either before or after, by the way. Another way is conspiracy, when uh, individuals talk about doing something and then actually do it. Uh, most likely in this case, the fourth way would be felony murder, that she simply was part and parcel of the robbery attempt, and that went awry and he died. In most states, including in Florida, that's first-degree murder. Uh, all you have to do is be part of it. Sometimes I explain to a client that uh, you can just be outside the bank uh, and your job is to look for the cops and your co-defendant inside uh, takes a, a mallet and hits the teller over the head and he dies. You're going to be charged with felony murder, even though you didn't know he was going to do it, but you did know he was going to rob the bank. Got so it. that's the most likely case here. You know, the, the victim's cousin was in court, and this was a bond hearing, and bond denied, by the way. You know, and he was tearful. And he said, you know, Shannon Griffin just thought he was going on a date. You know, he, he, he was, you know, an innocent guy, thought he was maybe flirting back and forth online. Next thing you know, he's in this life or death struggle, and he lost. He ends up dead. So back to the matter at hand. So it's not first-degree murder where she pulls the trigger, but she, if she's the player that lured him... She's in some. She's in trouble here. Right. If she if she's part of the felony, that's all that's necessary. Is that she was a part and parcel of that felony, and then someone dies in the course. Uh, another example I give sometimes is you could go into the convenience store, uh, ro uh, rob the convenience store, and back out. And when you're backing out in your car, you run over a little old lady. You know. Uh, and you could be the passenger in that car. You don't have to be driving it either, but you were part of the robbery. Somebody died in the process. That's felony murder. And that's why the state's not accepting uh, a 15 years, because they consider it heinous. In fact, they think that she was the, uh, uh, the beginning of this. The, I don't know if she was the mastermind or not, but it, it was her idea. She laid back. On the other high end of it, uh, Mike, she does have a disability. She's taking Thorazine, which is an antipsychotic drug. It's an old antipsychotic mm. drug for schizophrenia. So so, you know, she may have a defense to this. Interesting. All right, we're going to con continue to follow it. Uh, nice work, Jeff. And again, you know, she just talked about this newfound fame in her life. And by the way, no no excuse because this kid ends up dead. But this newfound fame, and she just thought she could do no, no, no wrong. And again, ends up with the wrong crowd. We'll see. Yeah, but it's no longer the hiccups, what we're talking about. Those went away on their own. Murder charge not going away on its own. As again, she's going to stand trial. Back with us are one man, Justice Squad Defense Attorney Jeff Gold. Let's get some more details out there for everybody, Jeff. So, Prosecutors believe that Jennifer Mee, again, befriends Griffin, lures him in, going to sell him pot for 50 or 60 bucks, and then the two guys are going to rob him. Robbery goes awry, and, and he ends up shot and killed. So if she is the lure, is she guilty of first-degree murder? If she was part of the plan to rob him, then she is guilty at least of felony murder. It is something that kids have to be aware of all the time. I have them in my office, Mike, and I say, you may think you're not involved in the larger crime, but you can do a theft, you can do a robbery, and then if in the course of that robbery somebody dies, that's murder. And you could be the, the guy farthest away with no contact. You don't have to touch anybody, just like she was far away from this particular incident, if she was a, a part of the robbery plan, she's guilty of felony murder. Got it. All right. And she's told different stories. Originally, she's telling authorities it's some love triangle, that Shannon Griffin was messing with the girl, one of the girlfriends of one of the alleged accomplices. Then she breaks down in tears and tells authorities, yes, she lured Shannon Griffin in, and then she goes back to the original love triangle story. How does that work in a court of law when you're changing stories like that? 
Well, you know, what is a jury to believe? A story where you say you're innocent or a story where you say you're guilty? It is much more likely that somebody is going to, it's going to be truthful if they admit they did something. Because wh what do you have to gain by admitting? By saying, I'm not guilty, that sounds self-serving. So admissions against interest are always more credible to a jury. And it's much more likely that the story in the middle is the truth, that she had something to do with it and stayed back while the other two went to get money. Another fact in the case apparently is that before it occurred she did say to somebody that they were going to get money and this is they didn't say how but this is apparently was their plan right you, you know you look at it here we're looking at the video Jeff she's crying uh, you know and her story is that she was overwhelmed by the all the attention felt that she could do no wrong and that she just got in with the wrong crowd I, I know it's not a legal question but how much will the sympathy factor play in for her well, I think it can be a legal question because she has a disability and she was being treated with Thorazine. And Thorazine is an old-style anti-schizophrenic drug. And, uh, uh, you know, that can. Her intent in the case, her understanding of what was going on can be crucial, especially when she is divorced from the actual shooting itself. There are three levels here. The shooter, convicted already. Then there's her because of the information, her admission, uh, uh, the online stuff. And then finally, there's the last fellow, Newton, who hasn't gone on trial. There seems to be the least evidence as to what his guilt is. I think that uh, she does have a defense, but there's evidence against her as well. Right. And there's, you know, she battled the hiccups. Uh, there's reports she has Tourette's as well. So th that could all play in here, you know, you know, as you look at her life and what's gone down. Jeff, great work as always. Uh, thanks so much. We're also getting, uh, folks, some new information. A lot